What's going on guys? Uh, it has been a minute. I'm just gonna jump right into it. Today, I am changing, not changing, I'm rebuilding the brake caliper on the GTC. Should be excited, I've never done it before. I've looked up a couple videos. Let me turn this fan off. Okay, so there's not one out there that is specifically for the GTC. Really, I don't know if there's one for any Mercedes out there, like any AMG, like modern day, relatively speaking. And so I figured, let's figure this out. Connor and Nate should be coming by to help out um, a little bit later. Um, we're all gonna start at the same time. Figured I got kind of bored watching the Bedlam game, which sounds bad because it's a really, really good game. Um, I just really just don't wanna see the results because I'm kind of afraid <laughs> that we're gonna lose. It's not gonna happen. We're not gonna lose, we're not gonna lose. Anyway, so I figured I'd just uh, go ahead and start on it. Let's do this. All right, so first things first, I already, as you can see, got the car jacked up. Um, yes, I did add a new sticker. It's been a minute. It's been a minute, but I didn't film anything really, but we went to Coda and uh, car did great. Car did great, um, somewhat, which kind of leads me to the point of why we're doing what we're doing here. Um, this caliper, we found out that one of the pistons is getting stuck. And so we are just going to go ahead and rebuild it. KW Club Sport, uh, height adjustable springs there. A couple additions though, um, that you might've not seen since last time, or I don't think I've actually done a review of this car, um, but, I added these little carbon fiber splitter extensions um, just to kind of square up the front of the car um, for looks and that kind of thing. Obviously, I don't think, hypothetically speaking, I'm sure at like 180, I'm sure there might be some kind of a, I don't know, I don't even know. I'm just gonna stop it right there. I do have a pair of little canards that go, um, they're supposed to go here, but they seem to fit really well up here that I have not put on. Still debating putting them on or not. Overall, car looks amazing. A couple more beauty marks here and there, just from road trips and all that sort of stuff. It's because I actually drive the car, guys, so I have, you know, marks and dents here and there. No dents, sorry, just like rock chips. But anyway, so how are we going to rebuild it? What are we doing? What kit are we using? Etc. Etc. We are going to use gyro disc. Let me tell you something about these. So I called Brembo because those are originally Brembo brakes, I believe. And Brembo doesn't make or doesn't sell individual seals like this because apparently it's proprietary information, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, so I called Gyro Disc because I was looking at getting some rotors for this vehicle. And the dude was, I forgot his name. I feel so bad. But the dude was so awesome. He was like, dude, I think they're the same piston size as the GTRs with this carbon ceramic brakes are. And so I was like, dude, if that's the case, uh, send me some. And so they are. Uh, matter of fact, which means you don't have to get gyro disc, but I recommend you guys get gyro disc because um, they're awesome. But they are the 32, 34, 38 uh, millimeter piston sizes. They give us a nice little dust boot and then the um, actual wear seal, or I forget what it's called specifically, the pressure seal. The pressure seal is inside this. And so that's really cool packaging, really nice quality um, work. But without further ado, let's get started. So I'm gonna start out by unplugging everything first. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this uh, brake pad wear sensor. Hopefully I don't break it. <laughs> and then also disconnecting the brake fluid line down there. Um, turns out these are actually, previous owner put some uh, braided lines in there. So that's a, that's a nice little plus. After I undo those, I think I'm gonna go ahead and remove the pads with um, by punching these out down here, removing this bolt and then removing this retainer clip. Um, and then go ahead and pull the pads out. And then I believe all we have to do, remove this bolt right here. And there's another one down here. Um, and the caliper should just come on right off. What bolt this is, it's uh, um, this, hold on, focus, focus, focus. Hold on, let's try this. Aha. There we go. So it's called, uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's this. It's, um, I guess an HW10, I assume a 10 mil, but inverted. But anyway, it's just those. We'll put them in this puppy right here, wherever they are, turn it and should be good. So let's give it a shot. It's a 13, this little thing. 
So if these get hard to pull out, what you can do is you can push down on this retainer clip and then there we go, right here. And that should help you squeeze it out. Maybe your brake pad sensor out of the way. They're known to break, so don't be afraid if you break them. I just uh, have been lucky every time I've done mine. I think these retainers only go in one way, so it shouldn't be too hard to put in, but just make sure it touches the top if you're worried. That actually worked. So there's one little thing I forgot. Um, the brake pad sensor holder deal. Um, looks like there's probably, maybe it's a Torx. I wanna say it's an eight mil, maybe it might be a Torx. Let's see. There's the e-torx there, I'll tell you the size. You gotta unscrew it and then this will come off of the caliper and you should be good. But say you're only changing your brake pads, right? That's all you need to do. After you do this, then you can just grab your brake pads, pull them out and uh, you'd be good to go. You can just shimmy them out. Usually if they're actually used and old, they'll come out a lot easier, but because mine are brand new pads, um, they're kind of stuck in there. But anyway, let's see if I can get them out. You can see that it's wearing uneven, just slightly on the, on the top side. So really, I would assume that this is this piston that gets stuck. I think these top ones you can kind of... There's the other one. This one you can tell is pretty evenly worn. So I really think it's just this piston over here. Remember, leverage is your friend. Let's take the pad sensor mount off. So the pad sensor is off and it is actually a or E10. It's an inverse Torx. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's an E10. All right, so if you look right down over here, this one right here, that is your brake line going into the caliper. That is an 11 spanner. So you'll just go ahead and undo that one and get ready to have either like a spill bucket or some tape or some or like some stopper to stop that line off because you will get brake fluid for uh, pouring out. Um, I'm gonna tape it. We'll see if that works. All right, let's try this. I think this is the thing to do. Okay. Woo! Here we are. We're home free. Careful, there is a washer on there, don't lose it. Oh, you gotta watch the brake fluid, wherever it was. Oh, there it is. But anyway, here's the caliper, Mercedes AMG. Any car that's got the red brake calipers, this is what they look like. Um, that goes from, I believe the E63 too, but I know the C63S's, the GTC's, GTS's with the red um, brake calipers. This is what you're looking at. This one has been repainted. You can kind of see that the paint's failing here a little bit, um, some of these areas. We'll take a closer look at these here in a little bit. All right, so here we can see the caliper all split apart. The pistons are out, the dust boots are out. The inner seals are still in, the old ones. Um, here you can see on the old dust boots how they just kind of deteriorated and split apart. You see some of the yellow from the paint that they've painted onto the seals. Um, not good, not good. Um, these are the new ones from Gyro the Disc. You can see the inner pressure seal is still in, which frankly I forgot to take apart until the last minute. But um, the process for these, go and take the pistons out and clean off any kind of deposit that might be on there. These are relatively new, so not really much on there. Don't use sandpaper because you will gouge it and uh, mess with the finish on it. 
Um, anyway, the process is go ahead and soak the inner seal in some brake fluid and also the cylinder as well. You might as well. Um, then put the inner seal on the inside there where it goes in that groove. Slide your piston in. Don't go all the way in. Keep it out a little bit. And then put that dust boot on. It kind of goes in accordion style. Um, and then you can go ahead and press the piston all the way into the caliper. Um, pretty self-explanatory, really simple process. Um, once you kind of get this far in, you'll be like, okay, I understand how this works. Um, but yeah, and here in the next one, I'm going to show you the old uh, inner seals. They're in good condition, but it's just, uh, might as well change them out. So we're quite a bit in. Um, got the new seals on, as you can see right there. And I don't know if you can see that side, but those are done too. Turned out what the previous owner had done when he had the calipers painted. There's people that can paint calipers and then there's people that can actually paint calipers. Um, people that can paint calipers know that you got to take all the seals off and everything off, all the hardware, tape stuff off that doesn't need to get paint in there, and then you paint the caliper. Um, this person was not that person. Whoever painted these calipers uh, left the seals on and then just painted it, um, which is also why I think I was getting a stuck brake paddle and also um, some excess heat and stuff like that. We put the new seals on um, and everything went pretty smooth. Don't forget there's the dust boot, which looks like it's got two seals, but it's, it's just a dust boot. And there's an inner seal. Make sure we take the inner seal out, put the new one in. What ended up happening is everything went well until the last cylinder which happened to be this one for me, um, it would not go in flush. Um, so I started panicking. We couldn't get it to come out either. Um, and so eventually what we did is we put it on, connected the brake line to it, and pumped the brake a couple times until we built pressure and then got the, uh, the cylinder to pop out. We re-lubed it and, and corrected all the seals and stuff, put it back on, and then it still wouldn't go in flush all the way. So then what we ended up doing, pops the idea, is we grab this two by six or whatever this is two by four um put it across the cylinder and then we both hammered from each side we pressed it we pushed it we, pushed it. we malleted it we used the mallets to press pressed it and then finally that one went flush and now we are at the stage where we put everything back together so all i've done is i've put these top ones back in and now I will put some anti-squeal on the back of these pads. I'm going to go ahead and put the OEM pads in and then swap them out for the RPXs that I have sitting over there. Now you'll see me put everything back together. So the last thing you want to do is you're going to have to do a brake flush. I learned this the hard way, but you cannot just break the one side that you just replaced. You gotta do the whole system. I did this late at night, and so I did try to purge the, just the one line, and drove around a little bit, like around the block, and I probably had 30% braking force. It was terrible. So the next morning, I went and flushed the whole system, and did all four, but then I was still about 70 to 80 percent pressure and i didn't like it so i asked around some of my friends and they suggested that i should probably hook it up to a power bleeder to get all the air out so i made a call to my local mercedes-benz dealership here in oklahoma city and got with my friend sam and he went ahead and hooked me up did a phenomenal job on the brakes i also asked him to change up my front brake pads to the rpx's that way i was completely set for the track day and everything was good to go Needless to say, brakes feel amazing now. I definitely will have to rebuild the rest of the calipers eventually down the line. But for now, this is going to be great. So thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.